Last month, we spoke with the Bandy family in Michigan who have been struggling to make ends meet with soaring prices on everything from groceries to gas. Since then, the burden of record high inflation has continued to push the limits for people across the country. We spoke to a handful of Americans who've been grappling with a higher cost of living, and here's some of what they said. Inflation has just kind of made, you know, being a single mom with two kids just that much harder. Um, it wasn't easy anyways. We weren't, you know, rich. I work in a school, but um, it's just pushed everything to the point of, you know, week by week, day by day. I'm looking at the dollars trickle out of my account. I actually am leaving teaching because I can't make enough money. So I cleaned out my classroom yesterday. I actually am going to make more money managing a storage unit than I am teaching. In August, I had a medical emergency, which required emergency surgery. At the time, I had insurance, although I'm still paying those bills now. An, an extra monthly bill that wasn't there before and on top of a higher cost of living, a higher cost of transportation, higher cost of food, um, to have that medical expense on top of it ha has made things more difficult. The truth is, I don't foresee that we could continue the way we are in another year. Like it seems like if the costs continue to go up at the rate they have been going, that so many families are struggling around us and ourselves included. Um, I can't even imagine where we would be in a year. What other option is there? Um, we can't give up, we have kids. Um, it just means that it's going to, it's going to result in us having less to give to them. I don't know, like it doesn't seem that this problem's gonna go away anytime soon and that's really scary. It's clear that the realities many Americans face are vastly different from some of the economic indicators on paper. The latest example, the U.S. added 390,000 new jobs last month, and the unemployment rate remains steady. To help us put this all into context, we're joined by NPR business correspondent David Gura. And David, it's great to have you with us. And look, this new jobs report is strong. There has been hiring across most sectors, a robust 390,000 new jobs. But you heard the stories from folks all across the country just now. They're concerned inflation is eating into their livelihoods. What tools do the Biden administration and the Federal Reserve have to address this at this point? Well, I'll start with the Fed, Jeff, and it's great to be with you. The, the Federal Reserve is increasing interest rates. It's administering this medicine to the U.S. economy uh, to try to cool down the economy. And what's tricky about that is it doesn't want to do it too much, so much so that it would tip the economy into a, a deep downturn or, or recession. You asked about the White House, and, and here the president's hands are kind of, kind of tied, and he's acknowledged this in speeches he's given in, in, in recent days, including one after the release of those jobs numbers. What they want to see is, is these prices start to slow. And you know he's, he's tried to do some things. He and his administration have tried to do some things, tapping the Strategic Petroleum Reserve for one and trying to iron out some of the problems with the supply chain, which has contributed to, to high inflation. But um, his options are limited. He wants to convey to the American people that he hears their complaints. He hears the worries, the likes of which we just heard a, a moment ago. Uh, mm -hmm. And he and his administration are taking this seriously. But, but all the while, I think there's some acknowledgement that uh, this is a difficult road that, that they're going down right now. Yeah, and to your point, there is this quandary that if you're Jerome Powell running this economy, you don't want to actually see 390,000 new jobs because that raises wage pressure and that drives inflation and that takes direct aim at what the Fed is trying to achieve. Yeah, he's in a very tricky position here, to, to put it mildly. The, the whole Federal Reserve Board is for, for the point that you, you raise, which is, again, we're trying to, they're trying to slow or cool the, the economy just, just a little bit here. The fear is that we get into this spiral and, you know, the, the headlines attract the most attention here, that the unemployment rate was stable at 3.6 percent or that we had the addition of these 390,000 jobs. But uh, the underlying data matter uh, just as much, if not more, and, and wages is something of, of chief concern to, to the Fed. And, um, you know, those have ticked up over the course of the last year. They've started to diminish a little bit over these last few months, but certainly wages haven't kept up with, with the pace of inflation. So it's, it's incredibly complicated. And you're right. People are looking at this from different perspectives and, you know, where Americans might want to see their wages keeping up with the price of inflation. As you say, uh, that's not what the Fed is hoping happens at this point in time, Jeff. As you mentioned, President Biden, he addressed the May jobs report and he gave us a sense of what to expect in the months ahead. Take a listen. 
And as we move to a new period of stable, steady growth, we should expect to see more moderation. We aren't likely to see the kind of blockbuster job reports month after month like we had over this past year. But that's a good thing. That's a sign of a healthy economy. So what happens then, David, if the job market cools off, hiring cools off, but prices remain high? Uh, a really difficult time for Americans. It's going to set us on the path for, for recession, which is what certainly the president fears the most, all policymakers fear the most, Wall Street fears the most as well. There's been extreme volatility because there's this fear, yes, of, of inflation, of prices going up, but also a worry that the Federal Reserve isn't going to be able to slow those, those rising prices. Um, you know, you listen to the chorus of investors and analysts and executives as they talk about this, there, there is a growing chorus of those who fear that we are on the path toward a recession. I should say that there are others who, who don't think that the data are, are indicating that or, or leading us to, to that, down that path. Uh, but that is what's driving, by and large, a lot of the volatility that we've seen, this, this fear that uh, there could be a downturn as a result of all of this. And so what you described, Jeff, is certainly something that would lead to, to a deep downturn or recession. And uh, again, that's something that, that nobody wants to see. Of course, it's cyclical and it happens. Uh, but it's certainly something that the, the Federal Reserve Chair wants to avoid as it goes forward. NPR business correspondent David Gura. David, it's great to have you with us, friend. Thank you, Jeff.